Anyhow, <laughs> I'm going to start Skyping or uh, Twitch streaming me playing Final Fantasy, and I want you guys, it's going to be $45 a month, <laughs> and I want everybody to subscribe to me playing Final Fantasy. You're not even talking. You're yeah. just silently just playing silently the game. Playing, and I'll sit here next to an anime pillow, <laughs> and I expect to check for $82 million a week. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what Twitch is, dude. I, and I love video games. You know, I like grew up playing like uh, video games, and I like would read Electronic Gaming Monthly, and then it just turned into this like gross weird culture of people that are man children yeah and it's like it is you, you can't bizarre. continue to be 11 years old for the rest of your fucking life no that's the point of what our generation has become is yeah people that just want to be kids yeah so. well it's like at least we found sort of a thing that's kind of yeah we get to be children but we at least we're doing something no what we do happens at bars we wear hoodies we wear hoodies dude <laughs> yeah i know and we fucking I wear exactly track pants we just, say cuss words you guys are both wearing <laughs> racist sweats. we're two uh, two of the three of us are wearing sweats yeah, right now at, at work yeah i'm wearing nike shorts under this yeah, we're all wearing sneakers i'm wearing sweats because i went to the gym two and a half weeks ago and i haven't changed <laughs> <laughs> i got pretty close to going to the gym i did put my gym shorts on yeah dude I gotta but go maybe to the gym. it's because just the world is sucks and no one has any like hope for the future so no, they, they get, deliberately they, they get they, buried in no, the no, no, were deliberately no. stunted by both their parents and marketing I yeah mean, every day like, capitalism I mean, in the early 90s in the late 80s early 90s Shut they, the fuck up, Adam. they started really <laughs> fucking <laughs> aggressively, <laughs> aggressively pushing that fucking like tell your parents buy me you know buy me bone storm or go to hell the, right, that the that Those classic ads, Simpsons that's awesome. that we yeah, all yeah. know and love. Yeah, that's great. That's like that created this fucking generation. It's not just marketing. It's also you know the school system and you know people fucking telling their children that they they could be president before they knew the fucking alphabet in mm -hmm. kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And it does create a sense of entitlement. And I think that does create a lot of like problems with like cultural narcissism. The concept that everyone's special. Yeah, yeah. But what does that have to do with the whole like and a lot obsession of that, a lot with of that, 90s a lot of that, and nostalgia and a lot all that, of that stuff? Because you created a, 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 an inverse system where the best time in someone's life is between the ages of 5 and 15. Yeah, it's true. You right, know? right, right. No, 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 no. Even earlier than that, middle school sucked. It's, it's elementary school that people are all that, into. That's what 5 is. That's why I said Childhood. 5 to 15. Yeah. Your 15 child is middle. Whatever. You just wanted yeah. a, a point to have a point of contention here. So you no, I just, to what I, I said. just, di I disagreed with the range. I, I agreed with everything you said up until the age range that you. So isolated. you'd like to lo lo knock it down a year. I think or everyone two. wants to be a baby. You know, yeah. it seems. No, there's definitely. I agree with that thing in terms of peaking in middle school because it was a fucking simpler ass time. It's like when you're an adult, the the only things you should be thinking about is everyone in your life that isn't around anymore and all the relationships you fucked up mm -hmm. and how no matter what you get, you don't really care about it. These are the things adults think about. Not to, like, oh, what if Hillary was fucking Harry Potter? No. Hate yourself. Regret every decision you've ever made. It's true. Fear death while simultaneously embracing it. Embracing it. it. Yeah. Ah, uh, fuck. That's what adulthood yeah. is. It's yeah. not this regressive, weird... You know, baby fantasy bullshit. Yeah, but it is a fa it is it's so wishing fucking you were fucking dead and be terrified of you know that actually happening. Mm -hmm. But that's exactly it. It's so it's so fucking like comforting to think about just like getting home, eating fucking hot pockets, and playing Grand Theft Auto Vice City. You know what I mean? Like that's what it is. It it's is not scary. comforting for me. It feels honestly, it, it feels like being plugged into a fucking dialysis machine and laying down on a deathbed. Yeah, no, for Sounds me, it good. feels like I'm taking a time machine and accelerating closer to my death. Yeah. Right? That All that regressive shit gives me like a, a like a, like a, a, sincerely a fucking weird nausea. Like I can't even, I have, I have trouble watching old Simpsons episodes. Really? Yeah. Like but we had one night where we went over to Romaine's place and we were watching like season five or whatever. And I'm laughing at the jokes, but it's almost like triggering in the sense that it's like, you know. Life goes on. You can't keep clinging to these things that were around mm -hmm. 20 years ago. You need to find right. some way to... It does feel like passing time. To make time. this moment in my life, you know, substantial or mean something or like, you know, outside of doing a shit ton of drugs, I really don't know how to do it. 
Yeah, I mean, that's why I say well, it's not drugs success. Are, drugs are fake. It's, it's not, not success. It's not even like, you know, uh, uh, feeling creatively fulfilled. Even I if think I, I, creative I, I, First of all, I haven't had a project I've worked on in probably two years where I've been happy with... I, I haven't finished anything in two years. Right. Well, this has kept going. This, we, isn't, this isn't a project. It's this not a project. This is me having a conversation once a week. There's no honing. There's Twice. no editorial process. There's nothing... 100%. There's, there's, no, yeah, there's yeah, nothing yeah, you're that right, you're makes right. me feel like I'm I'm just saying there's a consistency. Where we thought that this was going to Yeah, but this would happen anyway. Anyways, it's just a fucking conversation. Right, yeah, we yeah, would yeah. hang out this twice is, a week at least. This isn't a product. That's true. Yeah, it yeah, probably would have been better. This is <laughs> like I make fun of Twitch, but this is there is zero difference We're doing between Twitch. podcasting and Twitch. We're Instead making, of gaming, I'm just complaining jokes. about my. F- yeah, but I would make jokes anyways. Yeah, 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 but this is for the for the people, dude. We're sharing it, dude. We're sharing our. But I know personally, I completely understand what you're saying because I feel the same way. Anyhow, it puts I do me, as well. It puts me, yeah, doing any of that kind of shit, watching fucking you know movies I've already seen or playing video games. Have you ever finished a retiring. project? I yeah, never finished, I finished anything. Plenty. I, you know, I mean, I, I, had, I start things, but then I never finish. I wrote every one of those, Nicole. I wrote like 350 articles as Nicole. Right, right. That was great. Yeah, but yeah. larger things I struggle with. You know, mm-hmm. anything over 5,000 words I can't finish. I just can't do it. You know, I'll get what distracted. What is 5,000 words? 10 pages? Something like that, yeah. I think it's more than that, but whatever. Yeah, I know what you're saying, dude. And I don't fuck. I mean, who who fucking knows? I, the only thing that helps for is stand up for me or being creative in some way. Feel like yeah. you're running. Well, I've been bit. written a new bit in literally a fucking year, a year and a half. Yeah, my stand up sucks bits. dick now. I can't. Well, I'm just. I haven't been doing stand up yeah. for like the last year. All maybe. it takes is doing it and getting back yeah. in the swing. You, get, you were getting there, Nick. You I'm getting, I'm I'm, f- I'm comfortable on stage again. Yeah, like, that's the I, first. I, step. I was in a weird. Yeah, no, I know how to get it. I mean, I've been doing this shit fucking almost twelve years now. I know how to like. Yeah, get back to being comfortable. But in terms of writing new bits, I just don't feel like it's there. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. it's it's weird because you always expect you look ahead and you you want there to be some kind of like you know epiphany or change in the in the way you grow as a comic. But really, that doesn't happen. You have an understanding of how to write jokes in your own voice. You get there. That takes maybe about five, six years, and then that's it. That's the fucking comic you are. No, for yes. me, it's no, different. Yes. And then I it only you, you only get better when you have a larger audience. No, I think that when you have the hour to craft. I think that I always thought it was some sort of like gradual thing where it's like a like sort of like you could plot it out on a graph where it's like a just diagonal line, but it's more like steps. It's like you have like a creative two or three weeks and then you plateau for like six months and then you have another creative two or three weeks. Yeah, and I don't, I don't agree with the, the five or six years. I think you just always do get better if you just keep fucking I've gotten, I'd say I've actively gotten worse in the last year. But that's, I felt stagnant for like two a years. A lot of comics also get worse too. Yeah. Especially after they get famous. But it's also hard and fucking, I mean, you know, it's different because you're, you were working on a ton of other shit and New York is hard when you don't get the spots. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, I also don't think about things in a funny way anymore. I don't think. No, you're out of your mind. Or, you well, do. at least in terms of how they would function as stand-up bits. Because I think, Maybe. Like, I think, you know what it is, is honestly, is through like Twitter and other outlets, I've been able to write jokes that are more in tune with my sense of humor, which isn't really palatable when it comes to stand-up. I mean, stand-up is learning how to take the things you find funny and then make them comport to sure. a, like, at least in my case, I mean, I write bits. Yeah, yeah, of So course. there's a setup, there's a punchline, there's additional punchline, there's maybe another angle, another punchline, three tags. And that's how you write a fucking joke. Uh-huh. And that's how it just was for a long time. Yeah. And with the benefit of things like Twitter or maybe just talking with people that I like is that I can go, hey, what about this? And then they laugh at the premise. I'm like, nah, I got what I want out of it. <laughs> and yeah. you, you want to be able to do that with stand-up and you can't. You really you have to take something that's and that's why a lot of stand up is fucking just boring as shit to watch. Yep. Even if it's comedians that I know that off stage are very smart people, mm-hmm. you know, and have like analytical minds. It's like, yeah, this Trump guy, you know, he's pretty bad, huh? He's kind of like, you know, all that fucking Star Wars, you know, Harry yeah. Potter bullshit. That shit slays in the stand up comedy world. That oh, shit yeah. does so well. Yeah. Because it's a fucking trite observation that you dumb down for drunk people. Yeah. And that's what stand up is. But the challenge is immediately baby relatable. Baby. It's fucking babysitting. Yeah. But and unless you have unless you have your own audience, you really don't I mean, I guess you could just take your club spots and bomb every night doing fucking, No, the challenge is bomb fun. every single night doing doing comedy that you like. Or you can continue. I mean, I think I was personally, my, my issue was that I've featured for so long and I just had to learn how to do well as a feature. 
and then that's like it. I don't. Yeah, it is different. It kind of breaks you, and you don't really like stand up anymore, right? Because mm-hmm. you just you're the setup guy for the yeah, whole yeah, fucking yeah. show. Yeah, I get that, but I think the challenge is finding finding is your finding, audience. It, it's it's finding it in between the middle is the sweet spot where yeah, of course it's harder to be creative and be true to yourself and also kill, but that's the fucking challenge. And it may you know maybe it doesn't fucking happen. I don't know, but that's that's what you you want you know. And some jokes might not work in a mainstream club, whatever. But I don't know, man. Stand up's the only fucking thing I like to do. Everything yeah. else mm-hmm. is gay well, when shit. It, when you crush, it feels great. When you crush with new it's shit, it's the best feeling in the not, entire world. Yeah. Well, I mean, heroin's better, but. Can you your know, dick suck? I've never your dick suck. And sucking on titties. I don't really like. I yeah. mean, it's okay. Gaming's better, honestly. Playing gaming, games all night. Eating you know, in a Korean buffet. Gaming is not better. Korean than barbecue. Having podcasting but. feels better. Uh, no, it doesn't. No, podcasting. And then having bad. a new bit that crushes. Yeah. Um, that none of those things. Going to Korean barbecue, and getting nap, high, that and feels watching. better. <laughs> yeah. No, it doesn't stand up <laughs> at all. <laughs> um, you yeah. know, <clears throat> most. But that's the thing. Most of stand up sucks. Pictures but. of Arthur Chu all day. That feels great. <laughs> it sort of is like a drug. I feel like like chasing it. Oh man! Wow, dude, that's, that's so deep. Fucking crazy. Yeah, that's, whoa, Thanks, dude. guys. <laughs> that just blew my mind. Whoa! Yo, what? have you ever heard of norepinephrine? <clears throat> dude, Mike Stork tried to have that conversation with me one time. I love Stork, but what's wait? What, I don't I, even. Know I don't know. One time, I just remember one time we were we've been talking for like two and a half hours. And then uh, at one point he's like, uh, you know what Nora Pernetron is? And I was like, well, I got to go, man. (laughs) (laughs) I can't let this angle happen. This conversation.